Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lights Up, the official WNBL podcast. I'm Grantley Bernard, alongside two-time WNBL championship captain, Desi Globitz. Desi, lots of talking points to get through today, but probably the biggest one is the anticipated return of Lauren Jackson for the Canberra Capitals this Friday night against the Sydney Flames. It's going to be huge. Anytime Jacko plays in this country, it's absolutely huge. And, and certainly Canberra have done reasonably well without her so far. But to welcome um, a player of the calibre of Jackson back into your team is not something you get to do every day. So uh, unfortunately for Sydney at 0-5, they look to be the ones that might cop the welcome back Jacko game. Well, it is, uh, I guess, good timing for Canberra. Uh, they've just moved into the top four. Um, they've got a you know, winning record. And now they just casually slot Jackson back into the lineup. How do they accommodate Lauren? Do you think they'll ease her in? Do you think they'll just throw it? How are they going to handle it? Uh, I think Jacko would, would probably make that call herself, I imagine, depending how her body's feeling. Mm. Um, she's certainly game fit and ready to go in terms of coming off the Olympics, so it's just purely that injury. Um, I imagine, though, she won't play huge minutes if they're able to control the game against Sydney the way we probably anticipate they will. I guess the big question for Canberra is, can they get the ball out of Jess Bibby's hand to give it to Lauren? I guess we're <laughs> going to find out. The other big talking point, or just one of them, there's a lot this week, is Bendigo on the 6-0 and start. Been fantastic for the spirit. They've got a bye this week, so they can regroup, see where they're at. Obviously, they think they're looking pretty good, but they've still got players to come in to improve the roster. Then with their games coming up, they've got Canberra at home, Sydney away, Canberra away, Adelaide home, Boyne away in the next five. That's a pretty testing run, even for a team at 6-0. and oh. Certainly a testing run. Um, not sure of the timing of Camino coming back in, but I think that'll give them an extra dimension. We've also got a WNBA import coming in as well, so perhaps this buy might give her a little bit of time to settle and work into the group. Um, they're certainly sitting in a beautiful position, but, but that's a really tough run, and particularly Canberra twice with Jackson mm. back, which we presu presume she will be. Um, Adelaide certainly have the height to match Gabe inside with Susie in there and, and Bulleen away was a tough game, you know, a, a two-point game I think mm. a couple of weeks ago. So very tough run and I guess in a month's time we'll really know where Bendy goes at. Certainly travelling well at the moment though. For sure. The Sydney Flames, Desi, as we mentioned, they're 0-5. They're They've got some problems. Alicia Poto out with a knee injury for the time being. But just happened to Snavel Rowe Cox as she wandered down the street and they've signed her up for the rest of the season, which is a pretty handy pickup. It's fantastic for Sydney and I think it's fantastic for the league to have um, a player of the calibre of um, the smiling Rahani Cox back on the court. Really great to have her back in the league, a super exciting player and I think with her size and strength and sort of looking at the size and strength of April Sykes alongside her, they've, they've really got some firepower there and tough to lose Poto and also Sarah Graham in the point guard spot but perhaps an opportunity for Jamie Kennedy who's been on the Sydney bench for a few years now and, and looked you know, she's going to be thrown into the fire and it'll be interesting to see what she's able to do. She's, she's got some good skills, Jamie, mm. as well. Uh, we mentioned these players like Roe Cox, Lauren Jackson, uh, Deanna Smith still going out west. And, uh, I mean, they're all AIS buddies of, of yours. Does it make you feel sentimental and wistful or just old? Oh, um, a little bit of both. Uh, if you, yeah, all ex-teammates, Susie Bakovic, Kristen Veal still going around as well. So um, I guess that does make me old. I was the nana at the time at the AIS and I guess I'm still the nana now. So thank you for bringing that up, Grantly. <laughs> we do bring it up because uh, <laughs> a couple of those girls do have their injury problems. The bat girls basically going around on one leg in Adelaide but still getting the job done. Deanna Smith uh, in Perth has, has got her foot in a boot. She's on the sidelines for a while. Laura Hodges in Adelaide's got an injury problem. Krista Phillips at Dandong went down with a knee injury. She's going to be out for two or three weeks. They say it's only jarring. Uh, Poto in Sydney, she's been cleared of we think really serious mm. damage. So everyone's got to cover off their injuries, it seems. Do you see a team that's probably better placed and better equipped to cover an injury right now than, than another, maybe? Uh, again, I think coming back to Bendigo, they've had a good run with injuries so far, as has probably Bulleen, who still have one player left to come back in, I believe. But um, Bendigo seemed to have the depth. Um, and again, based on the fact that Camino and also an American mm. import still to come, I'd say they're the team with the depth at the moment. Although Adelaide, with their injuries that they've had, have been able to cover them to this point very well. Adelaide looks um, pretty good and they're just cruising mm. along nicely in second spot, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, just under the radar a little bit at the moment, Adelaide, for mine. But yeah, they'll be very good. They are. 
Also under the radar is a name for this very segment that we have here on Lights Up. We need your suggestions to help us name this segment. And right now, under the radar could be it because we haven't been able to come up with anything at all. So please send your suggestions to us via Twitter at WMBL is where uh, you can send them and we will try and uh, rustle up a prize even if Desi has to pay for it herself. You can send a suggestion to, uh, to Desi <laughs> at Desi Globitz 6 or uh, Sharon Milner at Sharon Milner 4. But please send in your suggestions for the name to this segment on Lights Up. Right now, we are going to catch up with uh, the one and only Jenna O'Hay, who has uh, jumped straight back into the WNBL season after being at the Olympics and then in the WNBA with the LA Sparks. She went close to a triple-double on Friday night. Desi just missed it. She was two rebounds to assist shy. Let's catch up with Jenna and see what she's got to say. I didn't really get much of a break, so it was straight back into routine. I got back two Thursdays ago, um, did an individual on the Friday morning, and then we played on the Saturday night, and then it's been straight back into practices with Mark. And um, our team is really similar, so it's been good to get back with all the girls and, um, yeah, get some wins on the board. And, um, yeah, Mark's been really good with me um, in terms of monitoring my body and stuff like that. Coming in three quarters of the way through the season with the team very set in its ways and um, it was difficult to yeah, go into a team so far into the season but um, it was a great experience and to be in the Western Conference Finals um, yeah, it was amazing and the crowds that we got were really incredible. It was just such a shame the way we finished. I think Mark, our coach, has created such a good culture at Dandenong and people really want to be a part of it. And I think girls like Carly and Sarah saw what a fun style of play we played with last year and they wanted to be a part of that. And uh, they've slotted in great with our team and they've made our practices so much more intense. And, um, you know, they're going to improve so much from being within Mark's system and um, it makes our whole team just so much better. And it's really exciting playing with all the girls. been a dream of mine since I was five years old to represent my country at the Olympic Games so to finally be in London was just gave me goosebumps and just walking around the village and seeing the different athletes and seeing the arenas and being in dining hall and just the whole thing was just amazing and um, I'd be out for dinner with my parents after a game and um, yeah it was just such a special time and it's something that I'll remember forever. Susie Baktovich, I've never experienced anyone who talks on the phone as much as she does. <laughs> Whether it was one o'clock in the morning back home or it was, I don't know, just she was on the phone constantly and I would love to know what her phone bill was when she got home because it would have been astronomical. There's Jenna O'Hay, Dandy Nong's very own. She has had a massive 12 months, two years. She went back-to-back -back WNBL championships with two different teams, first with Bully and then with the Dandenong Rangers. Uh, she then went to the Olympics and, uh, and won a medal at the Olympics. Then zoomed back to the WNBA with the Sparks, got to the playoffs there. They were almost championship favourites, I think, and, and got tipped out early. Jumped straight back into the WNBL season, and she's barely had time to stop. Desi, do you think at some stage during this season there's a danger that Jenna may hit the wall? I guess it's certainly is a danger given the couple of years she's come off. She's just had a phenomenal time. But the thing about Jenna is that she's so relaxed. She's so chilled out and laid back. And, and I think that's why she's so good under pressure in the clutch in games is because sort of, it's a bit like water off a duck's back to mm. Jenna sometimes. She just is such a relaxed character and it's in part why she's so good. But I think probably she's smart enough and dedicated enough and passionate enough that she'll she'll get through the season mentally. It's just whether her body um, has the same the same run of luck yeah. She has been prone to injuries a little bit in the past, so fingers crossed for Danny Nong and um, Jenna that she stays healthy. Yeah, she did have a, a pretty bad run early on in her career, didn't she, uh, from memory, mm. when she came out of the AS? And yeah, she did. Had some foot problems, um, so fingers crossed. She's a great player, yeah. good girl. 
So uh, hopefully Certainly she gets is. through the season and does a good job. Hopefully she does. Don't forget you can follow Jenner O'Hay. You can follow all the WNBL players on the WNBL website, wnbl.com.au. You can also follow on Facebook and on Twitter at WNBL, at Desi Globe at 6, and our other co-host at Sharon Milner 4, and for those who are interested in nothing else to do, at Grantley Bernard. <laughs> Don't forget the ABC as well, a fantastic partner of the WNBL uh, with their live streaming of the game of the week on a Friday night and also the national telecast every Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock. And of course, the WNBL would not be able to operate, we wouldn't be able to put this show on without our sponsors, the Australian Sports Commission, Champion, Sporting, IINET, ANFA, ABC and Sporting Pulse. That's it for this episode of Lights Up, but uh, Desi and I will be back again later in the week with the uh, world-famous Lights Up pre-game show, where we will have a look at the uh, world-famous at the uh, at the at the uh, weekend's games. Until then, this has been Lights Up.